Okay. Not far from Uluru are huge domes of rocks standing closely together. Narrow valleys run between them. Anangu call these domes Kata Tejota, which means many heads. They are even higher than Uluru. Kata Tejuta has secret and sacred places where only the men may go. It is a dangerous place for children. They can only look at Kata Tejuta from distance. Sometimes they're allowed to peek into the narrow valleys at Olga Gorge. It's dangerous for children because there are lots of places that you may fall and get hurt, so you have to be careful. The soil around Oluru is red sand for as far as you can see. The children love to play in the sand, just like you when you go to the beach. Daniel has drawn what, is, what he calls a mamu, a horrible monster that comes out at night and frightens Nangu children. After heavy rain, the sand is covered with wildflowers. Look how beautiful they are. The wildflowers after the rain. All the animals leave their footprints in the sand. Anangu, by looking at these tracks, can tell exactly which animals have made them, where they were going and what they were doing. Edith Richards is an expert tracker. She shows the children the zigzag path left by a small poisonous snake and the tracks of a beetle, <clears throat> excuse me, Nigiari, the thorny devil leaves its footprints and casts a large shadow, a crested pigeon's footprints. Look as though they have been made by small sticks pressed into the sand. Edith makes a perfect set of tracks of Papa the dingo with her fingers. I'm going to hold this for a little while. Look at the shadow of the lizard. And there's Edith. She's a tracker. I mean, she can look at the track and tell you exactly what animal had made that track. The children often see dingoes and their tracks. Maybe one of you would like to study dingoes as your animal, as your Australian animal. Rhonda likes to go out, likes to go out bush, out to the bush with her father, Ivan. He shows her special places and tells her about how the birds, lizards, insects, and mammals live. Here they are. Daddy and her little girl, his little girl, sorry. Usually, so little rain falls at Oluru that it is almost a desert, but sometimes there is heavy rain that soaks deep into the sand. During spring, after the rain, wildflowers of all colors spring up. Some are even green. Many insects come to the nectars. These are all photographs. Beautiful. Bright sunshine on lizards, other animals, flowers, sand, and rocks creates a world of dazzling color. Uluru, after rain, is one of the most colorful places in the world. Remember it was just the red sand? Look what happens after the rains. Look at all the beautiful flowers. Just amazing. Birds come to feed on the insects, the flowers, and the seeds. Lizards and small mammals also eat insects.
Norman Tejakaliri, an Anangu elder, elder means a person who is old, walks through a very prickly grass called spinifex. When these grasses are very, very old, they grow so closely together that other plants cannot live among them. Anangu elders know just when the spinifex, which they call tijanpi, has got too old, then they burn it. This is called controlled burn. The fire hisses and crackles when the wind is behind it. The fire roars along faster than the children can run. It is dangerous to get close. The children watch from far away. After the fire, the country is bare. I mean, there's nothing on it. And dry. It looks as if nothing will ever grow there again. But after rain, there will be fields and fields of flowers. See? First day, this is a controlled fire, and look what happened after. That land that was so bare, the rain came and all those gorgeous white flowers start growing. Back home, the grown-ups tell the children Anangu stories in songs and dances. The children are painted for these ceremonies. They learn about plants and animals, fire and bush, and bush tucker. The girls sing and dance the story of Kuniya, the python. The boys act the story of Langa, Langkata, the blue tongue lizards. Here's a beautiful picture. When the children grow up, they will know how to look after Uluru and all their lands around the Great Red Rock. That's it.